together for the Lord in the house this morning. Shall we celebrate the new wine? And the musicians, shall we put our hands together for them this morning? We can do better. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the living God. Once again, I greet every one of us this morning. Good morning and happy Thanksgiving in Jesus' name. I would like to really commend our music team, the New Wine and the musicians. They've done an immense work. They were here overnight, all night, rehearsals, Friday, breaking yesterday. They've put in so much effort, put in so much energy, put in so much um, study, put in so much um, charisma. And they've been a blessing to me this morning. How about you? Do we have a witness in the house this morning? You've been blessed by the music ministry, house of his presence. Shall put our hands together for the Lord and for them one more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, all the music team members who are involved in all this preparation, rehearsal, vigil, planning, please stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Protocol, please let me count them quickly, quickly. Let me count them. Involved in planning, rehearsals, everything. Eh? Okay, you are standing clapping. I thought you are in the number. <laughs> Please stand up clapping. We are protocol. Are you helping me to count? Beautiful, beautiful. Are you done counting? Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I owe every one of you lunch this today. Yeah. On, on behalf of my wife, my beautiful wife, and myself and our family, we owe every one of you lunch. Praise the Lord. We also like to appreciate the technology team. They've, how many of you have noticed a difference in the quality of sound in this house? Shall we celebrate the technology people? And their trainer, Uche. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. We thank God for your lives. God bless you. You can put down your hands, sir. You can put down your hands. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry. You will not be counted. I know you. And we'd like to apologize. We're putting our best to make sure that the gallery uh, had a proper cooling effect. Money was spent, things were fixed. Um, the equipment, were the cooling systems on the gallery were tested. Well, I was just told during the service that the cooling system on the gallery shut down. So please, all the children, we value you, we appreciate you. You will become better than we are and we value the investments of God in your lives. And so please bear with us to all the children and all their teachers and coordinators on the gallery. Please bear with us. Uh, please bear with us. We'll work on that again during the week. Thank you. I'd like to also use this time to, it was my birthday about 10 days ago, and uh, people put in effort, resources, woke me in the morning, prayed for me, sent messages, brought gifts, sent gifts. And I want to use this time to appreciate all the people, all the groups, the men's group, the women's group, the city changers, all the families, all the individuals who are involved in just making that day special for me and my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wife. Uh, all the efforts put in from my wife to all the people involved, I want to appreciate every one of you. And I pray God himself will appreciate you much more for your labors of love, things you've done in the closet, uh, things you've done and without your name on it, without your face to it. I pray that God Almighty, who sees in secret, will reward you obviously, publicly, abundantly in Jesus' name. Uh, Special conference, Securing the Future, is STF 20. is coming up um, later this week from Wednesday to Friday, Wednesday nights through to Friday 11th of December. It's a time to wait on the Lord on a level because we have another one coming up in January. It's called Mountain Top. But Securing the Future is about uh, commit, uh, committing everything about the future, especially the immediate future, 2021, into God's hands. The Bible makes us to understand that whatever we commit to him is able to keep and no man can pluck out of his hands. So we are trusting God that the things we know about the new, in new year, the things we don't know, the things we are yet to comprehend, we just want to commit everything into God's hands, trusting that he will be able to keep, uh, watch over, refine, bring out the best of the year 
for every one of us. And it's going to be three days of praying with fasting. I'd like to encourage all the members of the church and people who like to join us, either as members of the church, you want to join us in this special exercise um, to prepare for it. Um, three days, we're going to be having virtual meetings. By virtual meetings, we mean we'll, we'll be connecting online. You can use your phone, you can use your tab, you can use your computer, you can use your laptop. Um, we, we'll have nine corporate sessions over those three days, three times a day, six o'clock in the morning, 12 midday, and then six o'clock in the evening, over those three days. And coincidentally, the first day, the evening session is the time of our discovery service. So though we gather here physically in the hall, the focus will be on securing the future. So it's not going to be a teaching service. It's not going to be the conventional um, discovery service. It's going to be a part of securing the future conference. So I'd like to appeal to every one of us to look forward to it, to prepare for it, renew your mind towards it. Let's wait on the Lord together. Let's seek his face together. Let's speak over um, 2021 together. Let's also trust God to guide us in the way and help us to overcome and triumph over every situation that may be lying ahead of us in 2021. We want to inform us about the theme for 2021. And while we say this ahead of time, we changed this culture from last year. And prior to last year, we wait till watch night service before we declare um, what the Lord has spoken. I, I, I was in prayer for a time about two weeks, three weeks ago for an extended period. And in the course of that time, God dropped this word in my heart. And I think I know God to a level sufficient enough to be able to know what he's saying for me personally and for his people generally. So, um, um, so we say these things, not so that we just get excited alone, but so that we take responsibility. We earn the thing, I mean, we own the thing. And we begin to press into God and um, trust God to give us the keys and, and trust God to give us the strategies and trust God to give us the wisdom for um, the year. It has a reason when, for example, God spoke to me also sometimes um, last year about new things. I was expecting new things on some particular dimensions. And then when some things started to unfold in the course of the year, I started to realize, oh, these are new things really, but these were not the kind of new things I expected, which still shows the humanity of the vessel. God uses human vessels to carry out his agenda. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, he said that the, uh, we bear these treasures, these valuables, valuable word, valuable revelation, valuable insight, valuable anointing. We bear this, we carry these treasures in earthen vessels, jars of clay. He said that the excellency of the power might be unto God and not unto us. So even for me, the channel through whom God spoke for the theme for this year, I did not know the ramifications of new things when God spoke it. We just spoke it and then we knew in part, but he knows all things. And I'm sure for every one of us, one way or the other, probably in some ways you expected and much more in some other ways you didn't expect, this year must have come with new things in our lives, in our midst, in our nation and across the nations of the earth. Right, so um, sorry, I'm trying to get into my notes. Bear with me a little bit. Twenty twenty one will be a year of access. 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 A double C E double S. Access. This is not access bank, but God could make it access bank for you. So um, so we're not doing marketing for that organization. We are just speaking the word of the Lord. And I'll just mention some things here. Access into God's plan. Access to God's presence, access to God's power, access to breakthrough, access, I mean, so that gates of brass are broken, bars of iron cut asunder, access into divine presence and power, access into divine wisdom, access into God's open doors, access into divine lifting, 
access into divine favor, divine mysteries, divine resources, divine breakthroughs, what God, access into what God has furnished and finished. And access into divinely enabled, I mean, divinely enabled access into the treasures of darkness. And two passages of scripture that we can also walk with and use to press into God. Overnight, I was studying the book of Hosea, and I saw in Hosea chapter 6, when we read from verse 1 to verse 3, it talks about how God has um, hurt us, wounded us, and then also he will heal us. He said in two days, he will bring us into his presence, and the third day will be perfected. Then he went on to say in verse 3, he said, let us follow on to know as we are known. That is one translation, I think it's New Living Translation, he says, let us press into his presence. Let us press into him. So that the benefits of his presence may unravel into our, in our lives. So access 2021. And so I'd like you to own it. Take it personal. Pray to God. Ask God to unfold the meaning of this. How it applies to you. And I trust God that God who speaks and man can hear. The psalmist said, once has God spoken, twice have I heard. The power and might belongs to God. And I think also the prayer conference, securing the future 2020, will be a good time also to spend time in our closets, even as we join in the corporate platform, to seek God's face, to ask of God to commit things about the new year and this divine word of access to God. Please, we'd like to remind us we have a special outreach coming up during this festive period when our sister um, Anne, um, the Google Green, um, welcomed us into the service. She talked about um, several aspects of the expectations, the moves of God, and how things turned out and panned out in the course of the year. And then also how in the midst of the lack and the challenges, we were able to, God was able to use us to reach other people, touch lives, bless people around us. And we're not done with that yet because the year is not over. Christmas is coming. Some people don't even know where meal for Christmas is com will come from. They don't know where a meal for New Year Day will come from. But I'm sure God can use some of us in the house. As for me and my house, we are committed to standing with and supporting in material and financial terms people who will need to be supported, uh, at least to be able to feed. Scriptures also say in First Timothy, Having clothing, having food and raiment, food and clothing, he said, let us therewith be content. So in every society, once these basic things are met, most of the needs of the masses, the human society, are met on that level. Very few of us aspire to get to the apex of career, of business, of several mountains of life. And so in this season, we also want to be able to be a leverage for the fulfillment of that scriptural basic having food and clothing let us there with the content so in this season we are doing what we call enrich as well as outreach for enrich we are trying to provide food stuff um, and um, the condiments that can be used to cook the materials are the cooling systems all functional um, technology are the cooling systems all functional I hope none has been intentionally shut down that ought to be working and I hope they are working at maximum effect by seeing people uh, fanning themselves. So let's be sure that we are putting our best and then we'll trust God for the rest. Right. So we have Enrich that will be coming up um, the Sunday before Christmas. That will be Sunday the 20th of December. So members of the church, members of the church who are indigent, challenge the need, the, um, the basics of um, food for the season, Christmas time, New Year time. We are trying to put resources together so that we're able to meet some of those basic needs of the members of the church. So after service on Sunday the 20th, we're going to be reaching out to some people. We'll be using the Heritage Hall at the back of this main auditorium to distribute such um, items to those who will show up and um, show that they are members of the church so that we can meet those needs. And then also we have an outreach coming up also. We want to reach out to indigent people in some segments. We cannot meet all the needs in every part of the society. 
Jesus said, the poor you always have amongst you. But we can try to meet some needs, identify with some needs in a season such as Christmas and New Year. So our, some, we have some personnel, members of the church, volunteers, who help us with such things. The outreach we did in October, they helped us um, with that to locate. They did a surveillance, the carrier a survey, and brought feedback to us that we recommend this location to be supported. And it was immense. We went with food stuff, we went with clothes, and our members who helped with our outreach were almost uh, assaulted. They were almost subjected to mob action because of desperate people who wanted clothes and food for their household. So I would like to meet particularly with that group immediately after service led by Brother Bright. Saro um, would like to meet with you and the members of your group briefly in my office after this service. So on, on Boxing Day, we want to do that outreach. We're packing raw food materials so that people who are recipients can have something sufficient that can last them for about a week from that Christmas season into the New Year season. And we're using this time to appeal to you. We want you to be a part of this on two levels. If you have clothes that you are not using, you've not worn those clothes in one year, you've not worn those clothes in two years, you thought it would be your Christmas wear, but now God has given you several Christmas wears. You can remember some other people to have something to wear in the season. Let's not you give things that can only be used by mechanics in the mechanic workshop. Let's give things that we can still use, things that when we wear it, people will not look over their shoulder again and again that who is passing there. Why is that person dressing like that? So let's bring something decent. Let's present in a decent manner, and then we'll have the appropriate personnel in the house amongst our volunteers who also help to pack it that and then we will need people who in spite of the festive season we make out time just for like an hour or two on boxing day to help to distribute this um, courtesy internationals of his presence we have one of our um, um what i call sister churches in the united kingdom and then the, because of the pandemic, they normally do these things also, put together Christmas hampers, but because of the season and the lockdown that has been going on in the UK, they are not able to do what they normally do. So they looked out beyond their shores, a ministry they could partner with, and then they are radar, zoomed, and focused on House of His Presence, and they want to partner with us, they want us to partner with them, to, they are providing funds, and they are also providing um, clothes, new clothes, used clothes to help to distribute to needy people. So we are not going to be touching one of those items. We are not going to be touching one naira because we don't want to be acans in the camp. It is designated, so it will not be hijacked. Um, so we'll make sure every penny, every clothing material sent forth gets to intended destination because we're going to be giving feedbacks and reports about how those things were used, detailed reports of how those things were used, videos, pictures of how those things um, will be distributed, I mean, how those things are distributed. So, um, so please, let's also take note of that. So we, they are sending what they want to send, but we don't want them to corner our blessings. So we'd like us to reach out. Whatever you have, you can, or like the um, media, t I mean, technology team to help us project the church accounts, the relevant church account, um, so that you want to give, you want to make a transfer, transfer to that account, and note outreach, note outreach, uh, Christmas outreach, Boxing Day outreach, just note outreach there, so that when the administrators see that, then they know what the administrative arm of the church, when they see that, they know what, how to channel it and how to put it together. Otherwise, you can meet with Pastor Richard Adekola in that regard. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord. Right, this morning I want to bring a word to us for a moment before we get into um, another bout of rejoicing and celebrating and thanking God for his goodness to us this year. And I call this one um, intentional gratitude. Intentional gratitude. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your presence, for your benevolence, for your mercy, for your life, and for making us partakers with you of the divine nature, partakers of you, of the power of, the, of an endless life, partakers with you of the powers of the age to come, the power to be able to forgive, the power to be able to show mercy, 
the power to love, to care, the power to pray and connect with you and get answers to prayers, the power to receive exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine according to your power at work within us. Lord, as we look into your word in this hour and challenge the saints and convict the hearers, we ask that you help us to bring a word in season, an inspired word from your throne, an anointed word by your grace, a word that will bring conviction, bring revelation, bring direction, and bring help to the helpless, hope to the hopeless, direction to the confused, and cause your glory to break forth in every area of our lives. We thank you, Father, for answered prayers because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Sister Anna said so much about this season from beginning to the end. Very excellent summary of what was spoken and what was expected and what has been experienced and what we have done nevertheless. Then someone may ask the question, why should I praise God? Some people probably woke up this morning with heaviness of heart. Some people probably over this weekend, every thought of thanksgiving, uh, ask the question, why should I thank God? Uh, some people look at their lives, size up several areas of their lives, and come up with that conclusion and ask the question, why do I have to thank God? I want to subject some things to our reasoning and trust God to bring revelation and conviction into our hearts. Without a doubt, people have had experiences this year that were least expected. People have lost loved ones. People have lost babies in their wombs. People have loved, lost babies even on the, I mean, in delivery. And people have lost mothers, lost fathers, lost neighbors, lost colleagues. I look at the city of Paracord because of the constituency I represent, and I'm aware quite a number, quite an unusual number of pastors have passed on this year. Young pastors, old pastors, and several ages in between. And so the question, a congregation may ask the question, uh, since God decided to take away my pastor, why do I need to thank God? A mother who lost a child, a loved one, a child uh, at delivery, a child in, in the first trimester, second trimester, may wonder and ask the question, why should I thank God? A, an, a desirous mother who desires to have a child may wonder, why do I need to thank God? I came to service this morning with pains in my body. Why do I need to thank God? I thought I would have a job since March. I've not earned one naira. Someone is thinking and also asking the question, why should I thank God? Some believe God for a life partner. Some believe God for a job. Some believe God for bigger savings, bigger investments. And some lost their jobs. Some nothing like a life partner came around the horizon. So various shades of experiences. Some have been blessed without a doubt. Some have been healed. Some have received life partners. Some have been celebrated with for naming their children, for uh, having their children. So different strokes across board, both for people on site and people online. But then somewhere in the minds of several people or for some people on behalf of other people are asking the question, why should I thank God? And I want to submit to us here this morning three vital reasons why we need to go beyond an opinion and go beyond the feeling and make gratitude to God intentional. Maybe your children, maybe your son sat for school, sat, did not have up to the level of grades you desired. You felt so much money went into enrolling the child for studies, for coaching, for lessons, for exams, for um, enrolling for the exam, I mean, with the exam board. But the result seems you still have to spend some more money to get that child to kickstart education probably on a higher level. And so the question comes, why should I thank God? Three reasons quickly here this morning. Why irrespective of your age? irrespective of your experience, irrespective of your opinion, three reasons why every one of us must be intentional with our gratitude in times like this. And first of all, I'd like to start from um, Psalm 65, 
Psalm 65 from verse 1 to verse 2. He says, praise. I'm reading the New King James Version. He says, praise is awaiting you, O God. Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion. You, the, I mean, and to you the vow shall be performed. Take note of the flow again. Praise is awaiting you, O God. Praise is ushered before the presence of God is ushered. Praise come for, comes forth in Zion before the presence of God shows up. Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion. And to you, the vow of praising you nevertheless, praising you for the good, praising you in the bad, praising you in the storms of life. And to you, the vow shall be performed, O you who hear prayer, to you of flesh will come and the first thing i'd like to bring to attention here this morning in the light of praise waiting for god in zion is that praise gratitude to god thanksgiving to god is a covenant demand a covenant requirement a covenant expectation Zion is not a physical location. Yes, in context, David took over the territory of the Philistines. The Jebusites were there and they were bragging and mocking. Even the blind, even the lame would dislodge your warriors. And David made an announcement, a proclamation. Those who hit this uh, um, city and possess this city from these Philistines, they will be honored in Israel. And so the Jebusites were dislodged and that land became Jerusalem. City of peace. A city of righteousness but within the expanse of the city was a formidable section where david raised his palace and dwelling and it is called zion or city of david but you see that is the natural context of zion the prophetic scriptural context of zion zion is a place where people connect with god zion is a place where the basis of connection and relationship with god is covenant the psalmist said in Psalm 50 in verse 5, he said, gather my saints together unto me, especially those who have made a covenant with me. Gather my saints together to me, especially, particularly those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So Zion, he said, you have not come to a mountain that quaked and fire was all over the place. You read in Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 22 to verse 24, he said, but you have come to Mount Zion. And he started to depict the values and the qualities of that Zion. And you start to recognize by the blood that speaks, that the angel, by the angels that minister, by the saints who are registered in heaven, you recognize this is a place of covenant. And God is saying here, whether you feel like it or not, in a marriage, there are conjugal rights expected of the man towards his wife, expected of the woman towards her husband. In a family, there are expectations, there are demands of the father to the members of the household. The Bible says in First Timothy chapter 5, you read verse 7 of verse 8, it says, he that does not take care of his household is worse than an infidel, a disloyal person, an unbeliever. And he said he has denied the faith. So you will see in every relationship, in every covenant, in every contract, there are obligations, there are obligatory functions. Whether you feel like it or not, I have a duty to my family. Whether I feel like it or not, I have a duty to my mother. I have a duty. I had a duty to my dad when he was alive. I have a duty to my spouse. I have a duty to my children. Whether the feeling is there or not. And so you will see in the office setting, when you are employed as a staff in the office, there are terms of reference. There are terms of rules of engagement. There are reasons why you have been employed. So whether you feel like going to work or not, whether you feel like the job description or not, you will see that necessity is laid upon you to carry out the terms of your job description. Are you still in here this morning? So in the job placement, in the marriage setting, in the family setting, there are certain things that are not subject to feelings. Paying school fees for a man who gave back to children is not a feeling, it's an obligation. And paying house rent for a man who moves to another man's house, has a landlord, has a landlady, is not subject. Whether you feel like it or not, whether you have the money or not, the rent must be paid. And here God is also speaking to us here. He said, listen to me, Malachi chapter 1. He said, listen to me, all you priests. 
This commandment is to you. Um, he said, if, if I be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear? Oh, you who call on my name. He said, my name is known even to the ends of the earth. If I be a master, where is my fear? If I be a father, where is my honor? So you will see in the constituency of covenants with God, relationship with God, engaging God in the affairs of our lives, it is beyond feelings. It is beyond emotions. It is beyond whether you like it or not. Whether you will like it or not, praise should wait for God in the place of covenant. Zion. He said, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with prayer. You want to enter the presence of God? It's not a building. You want to enter the presence of God? It's not a church location. You want to enter the presence of God? There are rules of engagement. There, are, there is a manner of behavior. There are access keys and access codes where if you don't put them to, to work, you deprive yourself from enjoying and engaging the presence of the omniscient God. So you see here, friends, praise waits for God in Zion. I, I wrote something here in my note. The demand of having children is that you can provide for them, nurture them, give them moral instruction, give them encouragement, give them motivation, make them feel worthy of living under your roof. So whether you are a parent to your children, you are a staff in the office, you are a man married to a woman. There are things that are expected of us in those relationships we find ourselves. Such things as honor. Such things as regard. Such things as knowledge. Such things as obedience. Such things as representation. And especially gratitude are basic requirements of humanity's connection to divinity you cannot relate to god based on your feelings and find advantage with him you cannot relate to god based on your cultural limitations and mindsets and find an advantage to, to him whosoever comes to god hebrews say in hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 whosoever comes to god must whosoever comes to god must Whosoever comes to God must, not subject to feelings, not subject to opinion, not subject to the state of your account, abundance of it or lack of it. Whosoever comes to God must believe. And so we are saying to us here, gratitude, thanksgiving, praise to God, appreciation, singing his glory and praise is a covenant requirement. And you cannot afford to subject it to your opinions, transient situations, or feelings. On a second level, why do I need to praise God? Why do I need to give gratitude to God? Why do I need to thank Him? Why do I need to demonstrate my appreciation to Him? A second reason for thanksgiving and gratitude is for all His benefits. By benefits, we mean the good disposition of this God towards us. The evidences, the proofs of his good disposition, his good will towards us. And another psalm comes to mind, Psalm 103. I'd like to read that quickly from verse 1 to verse 5. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless or give thanks or give praises to his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He said, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. If I may enumerate here this morning, this psalm enumerates some of the tangibles and the intangible benefits we enjoy from the throne of God. For example, it talks about God 
we need to praise him we need to bless him we need to hallow him we need to celebrate him because he forgives all iniquities without which we can remain separated if not for the bible says in lamentations chapter 3 from verse 22 to verse 23 he said it is of the lord's mercies that we are not consumed his compassion us mercy still they never fail they are renewed towards us every morning by night time when we are going to bed it is like we have almost cleaned up their their account of god's mercies towards us and the enemy is looking for how to accuse us and prevail over us but in the morning we wake up again and we see that our accounts has been loaded again with the compassion of god with the mercy of god with the compassionate nature of god so that the enemy will have no point no opening with which he can launch an assault effectively not because the assaults are not launched he said no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper they may be fashioned but they will not have effect they may be fashioned but they will not gain success in the final report of our lives so you begin to see here it forgives all iniquities without which we can remain separated from god and his resources he heals all your diseases otherwise we will live a life of pain of discomfort of disease and as a result isolation i remember a king by the name of asa asa was a mighty reformer in judah he did great things well you see eventually he became wealthy he became mighty and then he had an ailment at his foot i think one of his foot or the two feet and the bible makes us to understand in the report of the kings that throughout his ailment he never called on god he never factored god he factored money, he factored physicians, he factored the best doctors, he sent for them, he visited them. And you see as a result of that ailment, he couldn't live in public. Maybe there were sores, maybe there, were, there was a stench that came out of the king over a whole nation. The Bible says they put him in an isolated house. King over a whole nation, yet he did not have physical access to his subjects. Without God healing us of our diseases, we may find ourselves king in business king in finances king in the family yet we are isolated from public how many wealthy men just yesterday one of the wealthiest men in this nation it was announced that he died friday night one of the wealthiest men in this nation as a result of this current pandemic his wealth we don't despise him we don't mock him the message there is that wealth sometimes because i'm coming to that in focus in the bit wealth sometimes does not compare with health a life above diseases a life above ailment a life above the consequence of disease in our lives so he says god who heals all your diseases god who redeems your life from destruction god who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies i wrote in my notes here the basis on which we enjoy goodness favor and goodwill he satisfies your mouth with good things actually he's not talking about satisfying your mouth in terms of food into your mouth when i check the roots meaning and other translations it means he satisfies your life he satisfies your life not just food for a moment that will go down your belly and go into the restroom he actually means he satisfies your life with good things he renews our youth as the eagles he daily loads us with benefits unfortunately i like to say most of these benefits most of these indices are not really factored and evaluated for gratitude in our lives unfortunately most of us base our indices for measuring god's goodness reason why we should thank him reason why we should come up in church reason why we should celebrate him reason why we should offer an offering we base the indices for measuring God's benefits on things such like financial acquisitions, acquisition of material wealth, buying a car, getting, building a house, buying expensive jewelry, 18 karat jewelry, 24 karat jewelry. On the other side, many of us, we don't see the goodness of God in our health. We don't see the goodness of God because he forgives us so we have access to him. He, we don't see the goodness of God in filling our lives with good things, renewing our youth as the eagles. We measure the goodness of God in our lives based on how he has dealt with our enemies. 
how he has punished our enemies how he has made thunder to fire our enemies how he has made holy ghost fire i was in a church uh, during second service last sunday to minister i said it's very unscriptural to be calling down holy ghost fire in the light of judgment the primary purpose of holy ghost fire is for the one calling on god when jesus was promised john the baptist he said he is coming is greater than i am when he comes he will baptize you with what with the holy ghost and with what with fire was that fire upon enemies was that holy ghost fire pursued then it is only ghost fire walk a walk in my life on the day of pentecost when the day of pentecost fully come there was a sound from heaven there was a rushing mighty wind there were cloven tongues of fire that sat upon the enemies that sat upon the enemies, your neighbors, that sat upon the enemies who did not allow you to get the job, that sat upon the enemies who did not allow you to move from the level of millions to billions. No, the Holy Ghost fire sat upon people seeking God, loving God, waiting on God. The primary interest of the Holy Spirit fire is to bring refinement into our lives, to reveal the divine potentials in our lives. Are you still in here this morning? But many a times, most of us in the religious community, we measure God only on the basis of, you know, give me money now. Me, I don't get job. She, she, I don't get since March. No job, no salary. I work. They did not pay my wages. Then you see a situation, someone called to work for two months. He works two months. They say, go back home. And he's angry that he was told to go back home to his wife and to his children. He wants to remain on the field. And then he has forgotten there are some people while he was working two months, there are some people two years who are more qualified, who are more intelligent, who are more skillful without a job. Because many a times when we gloat on these things, I don't have the money, he did not kill my enemies. I saw that my enemy is buying a jeep while I've seen trekking to the bus stop. Then we miss the point. We cannot be grateful to God. We cannot rejoice before the Lord. While others are thinking, my wife was just busy planning and plotting, choosing colors, telling me, you do it this way, you do it that way. I want us to look this way. I want this. I want us to do that. I want you. Are you ready? Have you done what I told you to do? And I just loved everything. Because it was about God. It was not just about looks. It was about how to appear. It was about a sense of gratitude. It was about rejoicing. And that was a good thing. And I put my tail under pressure. I said, listen, I'm giving you short notice. I'm giving you short time. I'm giving you big work and you must deliver. He said, pastor, don't worry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to be grateful to God for his benefits. The benefits of life. Someone will say, well, make we go thank God now. Make we thank God for life. What if you don't have the life? Billionaires have lost life this year. Governors have lost life this year. Former governors, former senators, sitting senators have lost life this year. Pastors, general overseers have lost life this year. What if you have the billions and you don't have the life to enjoy it? It brings to mind and look how a rich man, wealthy man, he was so mindful of himself and mindful of money. He said, oh, my investments have yielded big time. Ah, these warehouses, these bank accounts, this bank is microfinance bank. They can't handle the money that has come. I need a major bank. I need a global bank. I need a bank that when the volume I shares my work, they will immediately put me on the board of directors. And God was looking at him. He said, go ahead. Size it up. Pull down the bank and the, the banks, pull down the warehouses, put a bigger one. Then he met him, Augusta. Well done for your business. Well done for your breakthrough. Well done for your Rolls Royce, your Bugatti Veyron. Well done for the jewelry you bought for your wife. Well done for first class and tour around the world. You and your immediate family, including your house girl and your driver, beautiful. He said, but sir, you may have those things, but I want the one that is mine. He said, which one? Did you plant seed for me? Did you invest for me? He said, no, I don't even, I'm not even interested. Just the life. The life. The life. He said, so is every man who is rich towards himself. Thinks only about the job he did not get. Think only about, thinks only about the enemy that was not killed. Thinks only about the business that did not gel. Thinks only about himself. 
and it's not rich in gratitude rich in honor rich in respect and thanksgiving towards God I need to close As good as riches are, money cannot be enjoyed in the absence of these other benefits we have shown us from Psalm 103. Well, if you have the money and God does not forgive you, the Bible says in Isaiah, the Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Every new day, while he's renewing compassion and mercy towards me, he looks at the wicked and he's angry afresh. He's happy looking this way, 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 he's happy looking this way. He locates a wicked person here and all the happiness disappears. Anger shows up. The Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Do we have a wicked person around here? Is there a wicked person around here? Is there someone who wants the wickedness of God rather than the benefits of God somewhere around here? As good as money is, as good as wealth is, a house, a job, a car, we need those things in the context of these other things. Loads us with benefits, forgives our sins, heals our bodies, delivers us from destructions, fill our lives with good things. And lastly, here this morning, is someone ready to thank God here this morning? Is someone's question being answered here this morning? Why do I need to thank God? What do I need to thank God for? What's the basis of thanking God? Are questions being answered in the house this morning? Do I have a witness in the house of God? A third basis for gratitude, a third basis for answering that question, why should I thank God? Is because gratitude places demands on God's abilities. God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. No fly.